Hi bead buddies and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelly. As you guys might be able to tell from the title down below, I am sharing with you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make a beaded bracelet. I make tons of bracelets on my channel. These are a few that I recently made and typically they are a little bit sped up just because I want to sit down and make lots of bracelets and we make bracelets together with our bead buddies community. A lot of times I get comments saying that you guys are making bracelets with me, which seriously means the world to me and that's how the whole bead buddy community started. But if you're new to making bracelets I thought we should definitely make a step-by-step -step talk through tutorial so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video be sure to give it a big thumbs up definitely hit that subscribe button down below don't forget to leave a comment down below because at the end of this video I'm gonna be sharing the comment of the day so be sure to use my hashtag bead buddies in your comments so you can get featured since we have a bead buddies community but let's just get started with what you need and how to get started okay you are going to need some scissors these are my favorite they are little kids scissors and I just find that they work the best but these are a must-have. I'm going to be using a ruler to show you guys how long I make the bracelets. We're also going to need some elastic. I've been trying out different elastics and this is by far my favorite. It's from the brand Go Create. They sell it at Walmart. I put a Kelly Prepster Studio sticker on the top of it. There was no label but it is just clear elastic and it's point eight millimeter elastic so it's kind of a thicker elastic and it's personally my favorite and the easiest to work with and most importantly you're going to need some beads so i thought it would be fun to share with you guys how to make it with pony beads because they're the easiest to see on camera and if you guys want to count them feel free but these are my favorite pony beads they sell them at hobby lobby amazon and walmart i think they sell them other places but those are where i buy them i do have an amazon storefront in case you guys want to shop i'm also going to be sharing with you guys how to add letters onto them and words so these are see this is the brand go create so these are just empty boxes that i had that had all of these beads in it because i go through so many of them that i alphabetized all of my alphabet beads so i'm going to open these up and i'm going to set you guys up so like i mentioned i'm just going to open these up And I just want to show you guys an overview of what I see. So these are my alphabetized beads. We are just really going to be focusing on the squared letter ones. And these are six millimeter square beads. And then my pony beads for size reference are six millimeters as well. So they're pretty tiny, but they're the biggest bead out of most of the beads that I use. From my point of view, I always put this tray out. And this was the lid of one of my pony bead boxes. They used to just come like this for these, but now they have these lids that turn and that are attached so you can cut these off or find one that has a lid like this and this is how I make all of my bracelets so if you guys have been watching my videos for a while you know I use this tray religiously I always get tons of questions on how long it is and it is just about seven inches so as you guys can see my bracelets typically start right here okay we're gonna line the ruler up and I usually go a little bit over so typically I'll do one it's a random little piece of plastic one bead over and it makes the bracelet just around seven inches so with elastic string i find that seven inches fits most people's wrist i did google it it is the most average size so unless i get a special request i just make it seven inches across and once you figure out how long or have a good reference of your bracelet i like to have my little spool of elastic right here and when i make my bracelets i keep the string attached to the spool it makes it easier i don't have to tie any of the elastic down but also the bead will not go flying also since I'm right-handed like to have my scissors on this side it's just a personal preference so this is like the setup okay so we have everything laid out we're gonna figure out what we're gonna make our bracelet spell so again I hope this video is not too lengthy I just want to do a walkthrough tutorial so let's do bead buddies so I'm gonna spell out bead buddies and I'm just gonna take these beads and put them on the tray real quick
Okay, so I spelled out bead buddies and my eye does have a little bit of gunk on it. I need to buy some more letter beads, but we have it set out on my tray. So we know what we're going to make the bracelets say. So we're going to go over to my colors and this is usually my favorite part of making bracelets and I decide what color I want to pick. So for this bead buddies bracelet, since I'm going to wear it, it's going to be my bracelet. I'm going to make it this really pretty lavender purple. I just think this is so pretty. So sometimes I'll keep them over here or sometimes I'll just grab a bunch of them like this and put them in the corner of my tray and get beading them and then another little tip that I like to do if I'm doing two words I will put a bead right there so I don't forget to separate them so we're gonna grab a few more beads and I don't count my beads again I just go along with the tray so as long as it makes a seven inch bracelet I feel pretty confident in it I think that will be good for right now. I really hope I'm not talking too much. I just want to explain this the best I possibly can for you guys. So we're going to take our elastic, which is still on the spindle of beads. This is the tip of the thread, and we are going to thread the beads on here. And I find it works best just doing one at a time. I love listening to music or watching a show when I make bracelets, so that way I can be as quiet as possible so you guys can hear all the fun clicky clacks of the beads hitting the tray for some ASMR so I'm just gonna get I want to say like half of them thread it through so I'm gonna fill up okay maybe not half I'm gonna say like one third so let's count them one two three four five six seven eight nine that's really unsatisfying we're gonna do ten beads I have ten beads then I'm gonna put my bead buddies bracelet letters on so I got B E A D then we're gonna put the one in the middle. That way it kind of separates it so you can tell it's two words. And then we're gonna put the buddies on here. So I got B U D D I E, and then we're gonna add the S. Okay, so let me show you guys real quick where we're at. So again, I got my ruler on my tray. The elastic is still attached. This is 10 beads. We have bead, blank with an extra bead, buddies. And if I hold my cord a little taunt, there's still room. I probably can squeeze four or five more purple beads on here. So this always just depends on how big your word is or if you even put a word because sometimes bracelets can be really pretty with no letters. So I'm gonna hold my elastic and I'm gonna twist. I want you guys to see this. I'm gonna twist. The spindle just a little bit so that I can get more elastic and pull on it and we're gonna add a few more beads one two okay I was probably right with four three okay nope I'm gonna say we need five okay you guys I grabbed one extra I'm just gonna put that back in my little bead thing so this is where I think I get the most comments about so I'm twisting the spindle again and this is what my bracelet looks like I have ten beads bead space buddies with five more beads then i'm gonna want probably i'm actually gonna measure this out for you guys but i want to say that's probably like three or four inches over here just so you guys have all of the same measurements i do here's the tip so it goes five so what i like to do is have five inches on both sides okay so we have the five inches on this side but we need five inches on this side as well so i'm gonna unroll this and I know this does waste a little bit of elastic and I got some questions on what I do with it. I don't really know. It just makes sure I tie the best possible knot. Okay, so I got you at a weird angle, but this is the best way I could figure out how to show you. So there's five inches on my elastic over here. I don't know if you guys can see it. And there's five inches from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors right here and cut it. Okay. So then I pick it up by the ends. I'm doing five inches just so I can have extra room to share with you guys because I usually, I'm gonna be honest, I probably do three or four inches, but this way it's just the easiest to share with you guys. I make sure that the ends match up. Let me see if I can get a dark background. So I match the two ends up. I just let a piece of black construction paper and I'm gonna put them together like this and then I'm gonna loop it around my hand. And this is kind of hard to explain, so it's kind of looped. I make a little loop and I'm gonna pull the thread through i want to do a whole video on how to do it but so then you're going to have this little knot and you're just going to pull it separate all the way down until it's kind of taunt so i'm going to do that twice so if you guys missed it i'm going to do it again so i like to go around my finger like this 
I don't know if you guys can see that. And then I pinch it and go under. And then I'm going to pinch where the knot is with my finger. And then pull it again really tight. Then after that, I'm going to do what I call a four knot. This one's going to go behind, and the one that goes behind is going to then go under. And you pull it. And I'm going to do another one of those. And that is all I do. Sometimes I will finish up by doing another one of those pull through knots. So again, stretch it, and then just kind of like you pull it, put your finger there, and you go down, bend it over flip it through and then you want your knot to all be in one spot so then once that's pretty tight I'm gonna take my scissors and cut really close to the knot and then you always see me put that on my tray and then I kind of stretch it out and put the knot behind one of the beads and that's how you have a bead buddies bracelet and you guys it fits perfectly I think it's so cute and comfortable I love the seven inches and it really does have a lot of give I really hope this video was helpful again I'm not the best at explaining how to tie the knot it's a lot of practice and a lot of trial and error and what I would recommend is to just keep making as many bracelets as possible and keep practicing tying your knots because practice does make perfect and I do want to say as a little disclaimer I have been making bracelets since 2019 so I've had a lot of practice and a lot of experience so the longer you make bracelets the better your knots will get so don't be disappointed in yourself if you can't get it on the first try just keep trying but here is the comment of the day be sure to use my hashtag bead buddies in the comments down below so your comment can get featured in my next upcoming may bead mayhem video I'm trying my best to upload every single day so be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when my next video goes up and i'll see you guys back here very soon with another new youtube video bye guys